order. Think, how would you measure and define intelligence? IQ tests are what we have typically used to measure intelligence. They were designed to see who would succeed in the education system. But modern IQ tests contain puzzles where you must create a logical sequence and they don't necessarily measure creativity, wisdom, musical ability or social intelligence. But there is some evidence that IQ corresponds to success in life. So for this reason, it is important as it can influence the kind of opportunities you will be given. In our current world, there are IQ gaps between different social groups. This is a result of human biodiversity. The differences are not as obvious as the differences between physical height or strength, but they are just as real. Hardly anyone dares to comment on the IQ gap because of superficial claims that it is related to genetics or race. But I believe that for the sake of New Zealand, this is an issue that needs to be addressed. There are high achieving people in any social group given the right opportunities. Attempts to link intelligence to brain size or culturally unique genes have all come up short. There is no real evidence that IQ can be determined by genes or we would test for it genetically rather than intellectually. University of Otago professor James Flynn had a eureka moment when he established the Flynn effect, showing that there has been a long sustained increase in IQ over many generations. On average, we are each three points smarter than our predecessors. That would make those of you over, say, 50, down about halfway up the graph. <laughs> and us young ones, we'd be skyrocketing off the top. <laughs> But the Flynn effect has shown that our IQs have been increasing in the West and parts of the third world for over 50 years now, and they continue upwards to 2012. But this is still much too fast for genes to operate in the human population. So any notion that IQ is almost all genetic can be safely tossed aside, or we would not be seeing this huge rise in IQ. So why do we have IQ gaps? It comes down to social and economic factors. The Flynn effect is concentrated in the lower end of the distribution, meaning a closing between the high and low IQs. Reasons for this include smaller families, better nutrition, more intellectually demanding work, greater use of technology, better education and a more stimulating environment. For example, our use of technology has followed the same trend that our increase in IQs have. This is all the case because IQ does not necessarily measure a kind of intelligence, but it measures how well we have adapted to our modern world. We are undergoing profound changes in the way we think with our everyday lives becoming more dominated by the need to think in abstract categories and to view the world through scientific spectacles. Now this is a far cry from downtown Katigati, but it is what our modern world is demanding us to be able to interpret. The Flynn effect is part of a big emerging branch of cognitive science with the leaders based right here in New Zealand. Although, some groups in New Zealand are being left behind in the shift to a scientific world. They seem to be driving with the brakes on. 35% of Māori and Pacific Island students leave school with no formal qualifications, but this is only because of their environment, and they know they are being left behind. Recent protests in Auckland demanded the government to look and see this gap. The recent budget has tried to get people into tertiary education, but how exactly do we take the brakes off and begin to close the gap? We need to apply the Flynn effect and its scientific findings to the situation. East Asians are a group with a collectively high IQ. 
This is not because of genetics, but because they capitalized on whatever talents they had. Chinese philosopher Confucius placed huge importance on betterment through education and hard work. His ideas spread throughout Asia and have become core values. Asian leaders create monuments of students in Asia who graduate from prestigious universities, often writing their names in gold on temple walls. The desire to succeed goes back many generations and has been accelerated by the Flynn effect as they moved into the modern world. This history and inspiration is something that we are lacking in a lot of groups in New Zealand. To have our own Confucius is the first way to apply these findings. A rugby player who studies physics or a rapper who talks about education is all it may take. Another example of how we can apply these findings to New Zealand is seen in the Hostos Lincoln Academy. This is a school in a poor, underprivileged area full of crime in the South Bronx, USA. However, it is not like the other schools in its area and is accelerating its students into some of the top universities. The school itself did not take much money to make, but it is what goes on inside the classroom that counts. They have adopted ideas from the high achieving groups, copying the East Asian idea of writing names in gold on temple walls and have given the students a piece of a wall to decorate when they graduate. The students are given the powerful appetite for learning and are taught to analyze the world through scientific spectacles. The classrooms are small with highly competent teachers and the students are very focused they are certainly adapted to the modern world. Now, the fact that underachievement is down to social and economic factors is nothing to be relieved about. We could really do with taking some of these initiatives and applying them to our own underachievement. The Khan Academy is another example of how underprivileged groups have been able to boost their learning. This is a site with over 3,000 online educational lectures and over 200 million people have signed on eager to learn. The motto of the site is to provide an accelerated learning for all students. And it has been seen that students with little access to other resources have used free online video to break a cycle and become the first in their family to go on to university. Utilising the Flynn effect and raising IQs has been linked to raising literacy rates. Adult literacy is considered vital to the economic well-being of developed countries. This is because our society demands a workforce that is able to comprehend and apply information. However, many people in New Zealand are operating at a literacy level below that required to meet the demands of everyday life. Increasing literacy means that students are likely to stay at school for longer and go on into higher paying jobs. For these social and economic reasons, it is important that the literacy rates of New Zealanders be increased. So because the Flynn effect and raising IQs are really measuring how we are adapting to the modern world, it has slowed to a pause in many developed nations although it continues on in minority groups and in immigration groups who may have suffered poor nutrition or been at other disadvantages. So to use this knowledge to help New Zealand's immigration groups is another great social benefit for New Zealand. We have already seen that our immigration groups respond the greatest to education efforts. A 2006 Adult Literacy and Life Skills survey showed that although the Pacific adult population had overall lower literacy and numeracy rates than any other ethnic group, their skills in these areas had increased the most from the previous year. And also their participation in tertiary education had increased more than any other group. Tertiary education is a bridge to further opportunities and is a foundation for economic growth in a country. This is because at a personal level, 
people with higher level qualifications earn significantly more than people with lower qualifications or people with no qualifications at all. This gap between the qualified and unqualified has increased over the last 25 years. So by working with new education initiatives, we can help see this gap close. Specific changes to put in place include making literacy and numeracy standards compulsory at higher levels so that students do not drop these options and limit themselves. We need to boost science and maths education in schools, increase universities' engineering and science capabilities, and most importantly, we need to inspire kids by showing them the workplaces and job opportunities available right here in New Zealand. This is Skyon, a Crown Research Institute with the purpose of driving creativity and growth in New Zealand science. Sir Paul Callaghan himself knew that New Zealand had one of the worst income disparities. He was passionate about ending the wage gap between New Zealand and Australia, leading to the Aussie brain drain. He said, we need to change the way we employ our young people. We only need 100 inspired entrepreneurs to make unique companies to boost us by $45 billion per year. Our kids don't know about these companies, but they should. We can make a living from using our brains. In a personal contribution to this, Sir Paul with the McDiamond Institute established Terio Physics a site dedicated to bringing physics terms in Maori to secondary school students. This ensures that we all have the same opportunities to learn. Currently, the government is not applying enough science to find the best use of its education funding. But I hope that I have shown you that by changing attitudes and mindsets, by looking at cognitive science and using the Flynn effect, we can close our wage gap and our IQ gap to bring us together as a society that is richer and smarter than ever before. And finally, Sir Paul told us that New Zealand's science leadership of tomorrow will come from the young men and women in today's secondary school and undergraduate programs. But I believe we will only see this bright future if we educate and prepare them for the modern world in the right way. We need to lead with the rest of the world in closing our disparities and recognising that it is only our environment that separates us. We can all have the same hopes, goals and ambitions. We don't need to leave anyone behind. Thank you.